Godzilla versus Kong is wild. It's crazy. It's silly. It's bananas. <laughs> Let's talk about Godzilla versus Kong, baby. For those of you that don't know, Godzilla versus Kong is the fourth installment in the monster verse. A giant kaiju and a giant ape coming together. What could go wrong? <laughs> Everything! The place Kong's at in the beginning of this film is an illusion set up by the humans. He's actually in a giant prison because they're protecting him from Godzilla who wants to murder him. So right out of the gates, you might have some questions like, how did they get Kong there? Did he go willingly? Does he like being in the cage? Why do they suddenly care about King Kong surviving? These are the kind of questions you should not be asking ever because there's gonna be a million of them throughout the film and the movie does not want you to think for a second about them. We also learn that Kong and Godzilla are like arch enemies. They have a troubled past. Not these two, but the two before them and the two before them and the ones before those ones. It goes back generations, I think. We didn't really see any of it. It would have been cool to see it on the big screen and not just told in, in a couple throwaway sentences, but I'm sure it was pretty epic that the scene that we didn't see, I'm sure was awesome. Speaking of things we don't see, it also turns out that Kong's best friends with a little girl who can't talk, but she can sign and she does. And she teaches Kong how to sign too. We find out that Kong saved her from a village that was being destroyed. Would have been cool to see that on the screen. But again, they talk in a couple sentences and that's the story. That's an entire arc of a character. That's just good writing. Apex are the bad guys. Apex is the name of the company. Apex. It turns out they've been working on a <laughs> super secret weapon. I don't know if I should say what it is. It's Mechagodzilla! <laughs> oh. That's right, friends. Mechagodzilla's here, baby. Now you might be asking, Khaleesi Grimes 82, how did the humans possibly create this thing? Or is it like an alien that came from a different planet? Like, like, is it like, is it like the Iron Giant? No, you stupid idiot, the humans made it! There's a little thing called science and technology and math. So what happened was a couple of scientists, yeah, uh, those are real things. They took one of the hollowed out skulls from Ghidorah, that three-headed awesome dragon titan. They hooked up a bunch of tubes to it, turned him neon, strapped an Asian dude in the middle with a VR headset, and next thing you know, boom, Mecha Godzilla. It makes perfect sense. What happens though, unfortunately, is you can't keep Ghidorah at bay, Michael. And soon the thing is taking over the robot on its own with its own free will. It kind of reminds me of the plot of Transformers like 40, when, when uh, Megatron takes over the, the Galvatron or something, I don't know. Movies are smarter than me. Okay, so Godzilla and Kong are fighting constantly. There's this Apex company making secret things in the shadows. Who could possibly stop them? Millie Bobby Brown, of course. She's teamed up with a couple of top tier talent, including a QAnon member and the dude from Deadpool, and they're gonna run around trying to figure out things. They get themselves in a lot of danger and it all amounts to nothing because by the time they uncover what's happening, so does literally the rest of the world. The one dude has a dead wife and to remember her, he drinks a lot because when she was alive, that's all he did because he was married. So he takes the alcohol and he pours it on the computer and that stops Mechagodzilla for a little while because as we all know, when you pour alcohol on a super sophisticated machine, it shuts down the machine for a tiny fraction of a little bit so that you can go in and do some damage before it powers back up again. That's once again, science! All I'm thinking is if it was so easy to stop Mechagodzilla, why didn't they pull out some of the tubes from the skull? Or just cut some of the cables they saw when they were going through different server rooms. Apparently there's no backups to this thing. <laughs> like just, just pull some wires, you know, cause some trouble. So while the Scooby-Doo gang is going to figure out stuff, we also have Science Guy played by Skarsgård, who's having Kong lead them to Hollow Earth, 
which is a, a, a place hidden inside of the real Earth. So they scoop him up with a few helicopters in a net that I assume they constructed in the course of just a few minutes. He jumped on in and they pulled him up, easy peasy, and they took him to a, to like a snow covered mountaintop and, and the, the deaf girl said, go in there. And Kong's like, I gotcha. And because the humans had already built some sort of a portal system that goes there. So how did they not know where Hollow Earth was? It seemed like they had the right idea. I love this movie! Listen, we all know Millie Bobby Brown is great, but there's another female character that comes into play later who turns out to be a double crosser. She's really like powerful and gorgeous and has like my favorite t-shirt ever on. I mean, I can't contain my excitement when she wears the black t-shirt. Anyway, she's evil. She takes advantage of the situation. She's smart though. She's cool. She's sexy. She's sleek. She's a strong female lead. And it's about time. We don't get a lot of them. It's nice when they show up in these movies to do absolutely nothing and then die in unceremonious death, which I love, which is great, which I love. All in all, Godzilla vs. Kong is everything I always wanted. A monkey and a, a dinosaur thing fighting in buildings and in the ocean. And other stuff happens and it doesn't matter. I came up with this storyline when I was four. And it's good to know that it works on the big screen today. I want to thank some special patrons who've gone above and beyond to keep this show healthy and moving strong. Richard Moe. Realm of Creation. James Henry! Finnegan Clisham. Brandon Barrow, baby! Jordan Lambis. John Ruiz!